In today's lesson, we will be focusing in on specifically two of our five senses, smell and taste. So today we're looking at taste and smell, and there really is a strong link between smell and taste. So for example, when you are sick, you can't smell, and you often can't even taste your food that well. And there's other times when you smell something delicious, and then your mouth starts to water. So we obviously can tell that these two senses are sort of working together. The sense of smell is known as olfacoception, and smelling is olfaction. And the sense of taste is known as gustoception, and tasting is gustation. So let's first focus in on our olfactory sense. The whole olfactory region is on the top side of each nasal cavity, and it holds sensors for smell, and it's around the size of a dime. And we could take a look at it in this picture over here where I have the olfactory region pointed out. Oops, did not mean to do that. Okay. And notice it's located right here at the upper part of each of the nasal cavity sides. All right, the next thing that we'll talk about is the olfactory receptor cells. And these are the neurons in the olfactory region that detect odors and smells. And here's a little fun fact. When you have a cold, mucus covers up the olfactory receptor cells, and this is what blocks them from the odor molecules. So it decreases your sense of smell. So here are your olfactory receptor cells right here. And Again, when we do have a mucus layer that blocks it, you could see how it would interfere with the olfactory receptor cells from, from actually being able to detect any odors. Next up, I want to point out the olfactory hairs, and these extend from the olfactory neurons into the nasal cavity, and they are covered with a thin layer of a protective mucus. So when you smell something, those odor molecules are going to dissolve in the mucus, and the dissolved odor molecules will stimulate the olfactory receptor cells, which will send impulses through the olfactory filaments in the olfactory nerve. So there is always that mucus layer, but how thick the mucus layer will obviously um, vary depending on if somebody is sick or not. But it is a protective coat. And then finally, I wanna point out the olfactory bulb and the olfactory bulb is the thickened end of the olfactory nerve that is going to send the impulses to the olfactory cortex of the brain. And it's going to relay the signal to other brain areas for additional processing. So your olfactory bulb is up here at the top, leading up into the brain region. So what we see in our picture over here on the left, we see um, the whole skull and then we're seeing just one side of the nasal cavity and then we're zooming in on that olfactory epithelium, that layer right there, and seeing all of the different components and how they're working to help transmit messages to the brain. All right, so since an odor molecule is going to bind to a receptor, it initiates an electrical signal that travels from the sensory neurons to the olfactory bulb for interpretation in the brain. And smell interpretation comes from the piriform cortex, which is a collection of neurons that are located just behind the olfactory bulb, and that works to identify the smell and uh, the thalamus. So the smell information is going to go to the thalamus, which is, serves as a relay for all of the sensory information coming into the brain. And the thalamus is going to be able to transmit some of the smell information to the orbitofrontal cortex, where it could then be integrated with taste information. Because often we have multiple senses at play here. Now, the nerve pathway between the nose and the brain is going to pass through the limbic system, which is a part of the brain that controls emotion and memory. 
So often what we see is that the smell of something can actually kind of remember, kind of um, may help remind you of a specific moment from your childhood or a specific moment in time that you found pleasant or did not find pleasant. The olfactory receptor, receptors are easily fatigued due to adaptation. Uh, we often use the term nose blind for this. So if we're continuously exposed to a particular scent, our olfactory receptors become used to those odors. So there are seven primary odors. Floral, which is flowers and fruity. Camphor, which has like a chemical smell, or kind of like the smell of also like mothballs. A pungent scent, which is like a sharp, odorous, ew smell. A musky or musty smell, which has a woodsy odor. Minty. Putrid, which gives that smell of something rotten or like bacteria growth on it. And ethereal, which is a more chemical smell. It kind of smells like cleaners. So like maybe like bleach, like odor. So these are the seven primary odors that we can detect by our olfactory receptors. And obviously if we're exposed to a certain smell more, we may become nose blind to that odor. I like that little SpongeBob little joke there in the corner. I smell the smelly smell of something that smells smelly. All right, now we will talk about the gustos, gustatory sense. Sounds like a little tongue twister. Um, this includes your taste buds, which are the sensory receptors of taste, and they're scattered throughout the interior of the mouth, including the lips and the sides, tops, and back of the mouth. And within each taste bud, the gust gustatory cells send tiny gustatory hairs up through the taste pores, which are the small openings in the top of the taste buds. Kind of makes sense that gustatory is a tongue twister because we do have this gustatory hairs on our tongue. The papillae are the tiny bumps that are on the tongue that contain the taste buds. And so notice in this picture right here, let me highlight it. I have the word taste bud right here. It's actually all along the whole little tiny bumps of that are on your tongue. And then there are the tastants, which are the chemical molecules from the food that will dissolve in that saliva, which will stimulate the gustatory hairs to send nerve impulses to the brain. So here are the gustatory hairs, which I'm gonna point out. Okay, right there and these are going to there is that saliva that surrounds it um, it's actually going to be transmitting that message to the brain and there are three cranial nerves that are going to transmit taste sensations to the brain there's the facial nerve the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve now, taste perception happens in the gustatory cortex of the frontal lobe, but you do not taste until it is interpreted by the parietal lobe. So this parietal lobe is going to be where that interpretation of taste takes place. And obviously it's very fast because we've all tasted something and then spit out something pretty much immediately when we realized um, that it could possibly be uh, unhealthy for us or could harm us or if it just simply tasted disgusting. So there are five basic taste sensations. There is sweet, which is usually going to detect your, the sugars, saccharin, alcohol, and some amino acids. There is salt, which is typically gonna taste the metal ions that are found in like table salt or sea salt. There's sour, which can detect the hydrogen ions which come from things like citrus fruits or from Sour Patch Kids. Bitter, which is going to detect alkaloids such as quinone, quinone and nicotine. There's umami, which is elicited by the amino acid glutamate, 
which tastes of beef and is commonly added into seasonings like MSG in processed foods to help enhance the taste. Because often when there's processed foods, they do so much to heat the food to prevent um, microorganisms from being able to grow on it that they add seasonings to sort of enhance that flavor that may have been um, eliminated when they were processing it. And your individual taste buds will contain 50 to 100 gustatory cells, which typically include all five taste sensations. But what's really interesting is that 80% of your taste comes from your sense of smell. So that's why if you have a stuffy nose, often everything that you eat does not have the, the taste that it typically does. All right, so that is our little introduction to both the sense of smell and the sense of taste. Thank you for watching.